All right, so then uh, what he moves to next now is he's going to give us two ways uh, to uh, consider worldviews, to help us determine whether or not these various worldviews uh, do what they're supposed to do, which is, you know, kind of make sense and work and that sort of thing, right? And so uh, he says, for you to refute a philosophy or a worldview, there are different uh, things that you can do, but two things should be on your mind. And you want to look at the worldview uh, of the opponent and identify these two things, arbitrariness and inconsistency, right? So arbitrariness is uh, is not allowed, he says, in a uh, philosophical outlook because uh, it, it's, uh, it's not, the, the outlook isn't rational, right? Uh, it's just a matter of however you happen to feel that day. If you arbitrarily think one thing this day and arbitrarily think another, well, that's not rational. It needs to have some basis for why you think and do the things that you think and do. Arbitrariness, he says, gives you no reason for believing that you found the truth. You just arbitrarily, you know, uh, think whatever at that particular time. Right. And so he says that is not uh, allowed in a good philosophical uh, outlook or world. Right. Uh, I, I have the belief that uh, if I go outside today, I have to have uh, three balloons uh, um, tied to my wrist. And if I die, uh, that's when I get to go to uh, to uh, paradise for the uh, rest of eternity uh, because I wore those three balloons. Well, why do you believe that? Because uh, because it's today, uh, uh, because that's <laughs> uh, even saying uh, uh, because that's how I feel again. That, you, that, that person's taking a step back and relying on something. Uh, it's it's not the belief in the balloons in of themselves. It's because I have this reason and then my actions uh, happen. So uh, again, yeah. even even uh, getting to the asking of why uh, helps helps uh, uh, with that. And we're kind of going to cover that here in a little bit too. Yeah. yeah. So you need to get to the place where you can say to someone you're witnessing to, why do you believe that? Do you have a reason to think that? Can you account for your claims about this or that? So they might have a reason. Well, uh, uh, I have a reason because uh, dogs bark. That's why I have to uh, uh, wear the balloons. Okay, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to link those two thoughts uh, to, uh, with me, uh, and and uh, or else you're just being arbitrary and you're just you're just kind of uh, th throwing the 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 mashed potatoes on the wall and hoping something sticks there. You can't. Yeah, let this, a, is, you, this reminds me of, uh, you know, the Colombo questions that Greg Coco was, was asking uh, in, in his book on tactics. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, uh, what do you mean by that? And then, you know, the question of well, why do you think that's true? And that this is the second question is what he, you know, getting us to. Right. And if we don't have a good reason for what we believe, if we just believe something arbitrarily then he's, and there's no foundation for it, that is not a good reason to believe something. And therefore, that worldview isn't a good worldview. And when we had Greg Kokel on the show, we asked him kind of, uh, are you a presuppositionalism? And he doesn't claim that title. But it's interesting how often uh, our, our non-presuppositional friends uh, steal from the presuppositional worldview. <laughs> So not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying, isn't that interesting? Well, we'll, we'll call it borrowing. Right? Yeah, okay. Stealing is yeah. kind of. Yeah. Stealing is a sin and it, we don't want to accuse right. other it's, believers. It's morally loaded. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. So the next one then uh, is kind of the fun one. It's identifying inconsistencies. Uh, secondly, no one is permitted to be inconsistent. Inconsistency, as James White would say, is a sign of a failed argument. No one is allowed to contradict himself because when he uh, puts together a philosophy, uh, uh, you have to ask, well, why can't you be uh, inconsistent? Because you can prove anything from inconsistent premises. Therefore, if you can prove anything, you it's worthless. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't help you at all uh, uh, when uh, facing tough decisions or hard decisions. Uh, uh, when repeating decisions, what did I do before? Well, you know, what does it matter what you did before? Well, what does it matter asking? Well, what did, uh, does it doesn't matter that I did before? And so you, you kind of uh, are able to, to, to not narrow your focus. And so you just allow everything to come in, which still we would say is a type of worldview, uh, but letting everything in doesn't allow you to make even uh, choices or, de or decisions there. Right. So, you know, so inconsistency, for instance, the probably the uh, 
the big one that everybody's aware of is the, you know, the law of non-contradiction. It's extremely inconsistent, but it allows you to believe anything, right? If you believe that, you know, you can uh, dabble in contradictions, this is a computer and the same thing at the same time is not a computer. Well, you can prove anything by by being inconsistent, and that's the point he's trying to make. So, if a worldview, if a if a claim is inconsistent, you know it has serious problems, right? Yeah. That's that's what he's suggesting. Yeah, uh, th- th- that that that's that's the one that you write in in the the front of your mind, and, <laughs> and you you want to ask them about that, especially I think. So when there's an inconsistency in a person's philosophy, the the philosophy can conclude anything, and therefore that philosophy is just inconsistent but it's also arbitrary. Right, right. So if you can prove anything, then that's kind of an arbitrary kind of uh, position. Right.